focus. World's most prestigious powerboat racing series, the UIM Class 1 World Powerboat Championship, was back after a long break as veteran legends lock horns with fresh, new talent in the quest for glory. The Class 1 fleet raced in five exciting rounds this season, followed by a standalone event, the Offshore World Championships in Key West, Florida. In this show, we'll bring you the first half of the 2022 season, rounds 1, 2 and 3. The 2022 season kicked off with thunder on Cocoa Beach in Florida's beautiful Space Coast. That was followed by the Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix with a super fast circuit. Then the series moved north to Michigan City with the stormy waters of Lake Michigan providing a heart thumping, action packed weekend of racing. Let's start with round one on Cocoa Beach. Thunder on Cocoa Beach, a decades-long classic on Florida's beautiful Space Coast. Multiple classes were raced including the Superstock and Supercats in a powerboat celebration that went the entire weekend. There were five teams competing at Cocoa Beach, with both fresh and familiar faces on hand. The circuit for Thunder on Cocoa Beach ran along the shore giving fans the opportunity to experience the thrill of seeing these boats up close along the entire circuit. As the first Class 1 race of the 2022 season was set to go, 345 Racing X Insurance team were working right up to the final moments before the race, fixing their drive shaft. The pole position lineup was determined by a random draw, and JBS Racing drew the coveted top spot. Race time as the boats made their way from the wet pits and out into the circuit for the eight lap race on this 7.5 mile circuit for a total racing distance of 60 miles. But that does not sound or look good for 345 racing as X Insurance breaks down and stops on its way out into the circuit. They are unable to start. Seconds to go before the start. Green flag, the race is on. The boats floor at 2,200 horsepower in a drag race to the commitment boy. Triple Two Offshore Australia may have jumped the start, which may mean they'll receive a 30 second post race penalty. But Triple Two charged ahead to lead the field from the get go. 21 Husky Racing was trailing, but keeping pace with the Australians ahead. Nigel Hook and Jay Johnson of Lucas Oil were pulling away in third as Jeff Stevenson and Michael Stancombe in the JBS boat trailed in fourth. The team to catch was Giovanni Carpitella and Darren Nicholson in the lead boat. And just look at what those waves and bumps feel like in the cockpit. Drivers really getting a beat down lap after lap. Lucas Oil Satcom Direct E3 were in third and going strong, but just one lap later they ground to a halt and bowed out with an engine issue. JBS Racing moved up into third position. Curtis and Lilly appeared to be upping the speed on the straightaways as they built momentum and rhythm in the middle portion of the race. Triple Two Offshore Australia found the going rough, and as they entered the straightaway on the back stretch with the bigger waves, they took some big air and slammed down hard. They came to a complete standstill, floating on the waves. Disaster for Triple Two Offshore Australia who were out of the race. JBS was still in the race and on course for a runner-up finish in their first ever Class 1 run. Husky Racing Husky Chocolate Steve Curtis and Britt Lilly were on their way for a record ninth Class 1 world title. Husky the winners with 20 points, JBS second with 15, and Triple Two Offshore Australia's Giovanni Carpitella and Darren Nicholson could take consolation in third place and 12 points on the board. Pretty good day on the water. We, um, we found out afterwards actually that 222 jumped the start, so they got a 30 second penalty, which was kind of been nice to know halfway through the race. Wow. And the push so hard. So, but um, yeah, I don't know if we'd have got by them, like I said before, but the boat was all set up, didn't miss a beat, so we were super happy. It's a day, we finished. But to come first, first you've got to finish, so 
unfortunately, yeah. This is a race, you know, sometimes it's uh, for 10 euro pieces, sometimes it's for a big one, but it's a racing. It's a dream come true. Uh, never in my 55 years, uh, in 35 years of racing offshore, that I thought I would be racing against uh, the class one gentleman. Two kicked off with the 37th annual Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix on Southwest Florida's Gulf Coast. Sarasota County provided the quintessential white sand beach getaway with golden sunsets and a very vibrant social and artistic scene. The weekend kicked off with a block party sponsored by CMR Construction and Roofing as the behemoths assembled downtown for the traditional boat parade as fans got a chance to see the boats up close and also meet some of the drivers, including Travis Pastrana, who was back with Husky Racing after missing round one in Cocoa Beach. There were four teams competing in round two of the Class 1 Championship in Sarasota, with Lucas Oil Satcom Direct E3 unable to join. Big news in the lineups going into round two was the return of the legendary Travis Pastrana, a golden boy of extreme sports and multiple motocross champion. He joins Throttle and Steve Curtis in Husky Racing with a win under their belt. Oh, it's great. I mean, we've got a lot of catching up to do, so practice is really important today in pole position, but I think we'll get back in the swing of things real fast. I'm just really happy to be back and uh, Husky Chopin has been absolutely dominating. They won the Indy 500 as well, so I'm going to try to step in and, and uh, keep that going. The course in Sarasota is a nine-pin oval circuit. Its long, sweeping, high-speed turns allow boats to run at almost full throttle. It's a pretty simple course. It's got some long, sweeping bends, so it's a very technical course. You know, pretty much down to the driver to keep it up and flowing. So if oh, we lose, it's Travis's fault. All right. If we win, it's me. <laughs> and that's probably accurate. Yes, that sounds good. Since 2019, these Class 1 boats have been powered by twin turbocharged 9 litre, 1,100 horsepower Mercury V8 engines, which are designed to add a level of reliability while also cutting costs. Here's Stuart Halley, general manager of Mercury Racing talking about these engines. To make the playing field level, what we do is we mechanically seal our engines, and then we also manage the ECUs to make sure that they're in factory site conditions and nothing's been modified. That way, the teams can, can focus on uh, hydrodynamic setup, and they have the benefit of a reliable engine based on a production engine, uh, so they can really focus on test time. A lot of the race-specific engines would uh, have uh, finite lives, so uh, the engines we have today really aid the teams in, in again, test time and, and setting up. That way it highlights the, the skill sets of the driver, the throttleman, and the teams. After the lottery draw on Cocoa Beach in round one, Round two offered a true qualifier to determine the starting lineup and which boat would take the coveted pole position. X Insurance went out early, finally putting their sleek red boat through its paces. Pratt and Jennings hungry for some action, but disaster struck just half a lap into their no flying idea, lap. Uh, it looks like there's a hole in the bottom of the boat. I don't know, oh, yeah. we're, we're following LPC, Miles lost steering. So we came off the throttles and uh, the side of the boat ripped the steering out, the lines, and it just kind of exploded and the dashboard broke apart and everything, so. Ah, uh, we might just forego pole. The damage was too extensive to fix in time for the race, and so they were out again. Huge disappointment for Alex Pratt as he was yet to get a single race lap in on the water. Uh. It was smooth sailing for Husky, however, as Curtis and Pastrana set the fastest lap time at 3 minutes, 14 seconds. Triple Two Offshore Australia were 3 seconds off the pace at 3 minutes, 17 seconds. JBS Racing ran into an electrical problem in qualifying, 
yet they got third fastest after Husky and Triple Two Offshore Australia. So Husky Racing took Paul, Pastrana and Curtis with the best seats in the house. So there's a couple of foot out there, it was enough that you couldn't you know, run it loose and hang it out, but you had to tuck it under and it was a fine line between being tucked under and then trimmed out to get the speed. So, but it was, it was all good. We were obviously really happy. The guys did a great job on the boat. So, um, yeah, everything's super. Race day with crowds gathering along Lido Beach in the VIP tent in anticipation of round two. JBS Racing were putting their MTI boat in the water, but they encountered a problem. We got delivered another issue this morning. Jeff, my driver, is actually in the hospital, the owner, uh, with kidney stones, so I've had to find a guy to sub in for me today. It's kind of disheartening. I, I love being in the boat with Jeff, so uh, our prayers are out to him. Jeff Stevenson's place would be filled by Charlie McCarthy on driving duty. Teams awaiting the green flag rolling start as the boats lined up. The green flag goes up, the race was on. Great start from Triple Two Offshore Australia as they nudged ahead of the pole sitters. But Husky find their pace and begin to pull ahead down that opening straightaway. Husky Chocolate moved into the lead ahead of Triple Two Offshore Australia as Curtis found the balance and the speed they needed on the inside, but the waves were big and unpredictable. After taking a big hit, Husky lost power on one of their 1,100 horsepower Mercury engines. Sure enough, this put Darren Nicholson and Giovanni Carpitella in the lead. JBS Racing also passed Husky, Curtis and Pastrana dropping to third as they tried to get their engines fired back up. When Curtis and Pastrana finally managed to get the boat back up and running, they find themselves 35 seconds behind the race leaders, Triple Two Offshore Australia. Out in the lead, look at those waves, the boats bobbing and hopping as teams struggle to keep their noses down and those props in the water. And there's Husky, Curtis upping the pace as they made up the lost time and caught up with the lead boats. Husky was back in striking distance of JBS two laps later. Husky Chocolate was on the inside, JBS staying outside, and a great display of sportsmanship from JBS. Stancombe and McCarthy gave the lane to Husky. Triple Two Offshore Australia were next, Nicholson and Carpitella in their sights as Husky went on the warpath. By lap six, the leap was cut even further. The two boats locked horns in a drag race with Husky finding the clean water and the top speed on the outside that propelled them past the Aussie team. In third place, JBS Racing's bad luck in Sarasota continued as they suffered a mechanical issue and had to pull off the circuit. And so Husky Racing cruising in the lead on track for yet another 20 points, making them clear favorites for the world title this year. One of the coolest things ever. I, Steve always said he was, he was like, oh, we can turn it up, we can turn it up. And we stalled the beginning, so I looked over and said, now I'm going to see what fast is like. And man, was it fast. Pretty cool. Pretty freaking cool. It was, it was weird, wasn't it? That water. You get along and you can hang it and you go, oh, this is like a little boom. You know saying, yeah. <laughs> we went off the gate. We got a great start. Hit the right on the pin. We went off. It was running like a freight train. We hit a really big wave, jumped up at all level and nice. Came down one engine, just shut down. We have a couple of alarms and uh, we wrong the setup. We, not, uh, we don't understand it's rough like this outside, so we are too much light. Charlie did an incredible job. I'm glad I picked him to come in the boat with me. I'll let him in there anytime. The overall results after round two. Husky Racing sit atop the world standings with 40 points, and on 27 points apiece are Triple Two Offshore Australia and JBS Racing. Class 1 Series headed to Michigan City, Indiana for the first freshwater race of the season on the Great Lake of Michigan. This venue is famous for its rough seas and high winds as the battle in the north was on with multiple classes racing for an action-packed weekend. 
To kick things off, a boat parade where teams showed off their machines and riders met and mingled with fans as Michigan City turned out to greet the Class 1 fleet. Races down and four to go, it was critical for teams to rack up points. There were four boats racing in the Great Lake Michigan Grand Prix, the only major change being the new boat and number for 345 Racing X Insurance. After two breakdowns in two outings with no laps raced, Miles Jennings and Alex Pratt could finally look forward to some action in their new number 11 X Insurance Good Boy Vodka boat. So uh, we started the season with two, two uh, unlucky races, uh, broke the boat both times, unfortunately. We actually purchased a new boat, uh, put a team together in 30 days, record time. It's been an amazing boat, and we're just we're really looking forward to going around circles today. Jeff Stevenson was back in the driver's seat for JBS Racing. The team owner fit and healthy and ready to race alongside Michael Stanko on throttle. The circuit on Lake Michigan was a short sausage course with very tight turns, fresh water and winds and waves expected. Teams filed out for the qualifying to see who would take the pole position race. Husky went out and true to form laid down a blistering lap of 2 minutes 03.67. Triple Two Offshore Australia off the pace with a time of 2 minutes 06.11. X Insurance were still to find the proper weight distribution or setup on their new boat. We've arrived at the first race without any real testing, so we're not sure about weights or props or you know how it's going to work and handle. X Insurance Good Boy Vodka had a decent run without any mishaps, but they weren't fast enough to catch Husky Chocolate with a time of 2 minutes 13.11. Bad luck for JBS Racing, they did manage to get a lap in but then had to retire with electrical issues that they'd been dealing with in the previous round. So Husky Chocolate with the best seat in the house ahead of the third race of the season. Triple Two Offshore Australia in P2, X Insurance P3 and then JBS Racing fourth. Race day on Lake Michigan with conditions stormy and rough on the water. There was carnage in the wet pits as boats from previous races in other categories came back in and the Class 1 teams scrambled to make last minute setups ahead of the third race of the season. It's picking up and we've decided to make a change. Um, might be the right decision, might be the wrong decision, but um, you know, it's going pretty snotty out there and the weather looks like it's staying in. So. Got real windy. They were uh, so rough. They're flying. I saw the condition is increasing. I watched the super stock racing, and it's going up and up and up. Last decision to reduce the ratio for a more grip and more acceleration. We're kind of set up for uh, a short, lumpy course. He's feeling good, I'm feeling good. Boat's running the way she should, so uh, we're going to give it hell. A break in the weather allows teams to get the boats out and into the lineup on tempestuous waters. The green flag goes up, the race was on. Great start from Husky Chocolate as Steve Curtis and Travis Pastrana start in pole with the inside lane advantage to the commitment boy. It's a very rough, very bumpy ride ahead for all teams. The Aussie boat has the speed as they catch up to Husky and the two go neck and neck on the drag race to that first turn. Darren Nicholson and Giovanni Carpitella going all out. What a run from Triple Two Offshore Australia as they nudge ahead in very rough waves. Incredible speed in this duel between two of the best throttlemen in powerboat racing, Curtis versus Carpitella. In third place is X Insurance. Jennings and Pratt finally on the water and in the race for the first time this year. The east side of the course. Here they are at the first turn. Triple Two Offshore Australia gets there first, but they are on the outside while Husky has the inside lane advantage as they come around. 
And they get through to the back straight, still neck and neck. Triple two offshore Australia is not easing up on the pace. Can Husky Chocolate keep up with the blue and gray? The water's even heavier on the back straight, but Carpitella is not easing off on the throttle, keeping up that exceptional pace as Triple Two Offshore Australia finds its rhythm and outpaces Husky. Going in third, X Insurance riding the bumpy waters, trying to keep that nose down and those props in the water. Oh, they nearly lose it. The nose goes up, but they make it back on the water. JBS racing close behind X Insurance as Stanko and Stevenson try to move up into the top three. Meanwhile, Carpitella and Nicholson have opened their lead against Husky, but they know there is no time or room to ease off with 10 more laps to go out there on very rough, unrelenting waters. X Insurance holds on to third, but they're getting a real beating out there and they may have miscalculated the boats waiting. Maybe too light on the front end as that nose keeps popping up. Meanwhile, JBS Racing just skipping over those waves, getting a good rhythm going as Stancombe and Stevenson pick up the pace and start moving up on X Insurance. JBS Racing catches up with X Insurance on the outside as Jennings and Pratt struggle to keep that nose down and that boat flat. X Insurance is taking a lot of air on the edge of control but Pratt and Jennings keep on keeping on. And look at JBS Racing on the outside, zipping past the struggling X Insurance as Stancombe and Stevenson find the clear outside waters to take third place going into the turn. And sure enough, there's damage on the X Insurance boat's rear starboard side. Out in the lead, Carpitella and Nicholson as Triple Two Offshore Australia solidify first place with some very smooth handling on what are very rough conditions, maintaining over 10 boat lengths on Curtis and Pastrana in the Husky Chocolate Boat. Carpitella masterful in these conditions, very much a throttleman's race out there on Lake Michigan. But behind them, Curtis is known to fill the course out for the first few laps and then power past into the lead. Can Triple Two hold on for the remaining laps? The damage appears not to be holding Jennings and Pratt back as they find a rhythm, keep the nose down and get the pace to now move up and challenge JBS for third on the inside lane. And they do it. What a comeback from Pratt and Jennings. X Insurance grabs third place on the inside going into that turn. Kudos to Pratt in his first ever Class 1 race as Throttleman. X Insurance almost goes over again, but they keep going in this never say die display. Meanwhile, the hard charging Triple Two Offshore Australia reigns supreme. Coming up on the two back markers, about to lap JBS and X Insurance. The Aussie boat speeds past JBS, catches X Insurance. The two going around neck and neck. Will this slow Triple Two's momentum, giving Husky an opportunity to close the gap? But it seems no bother to Nicholson and Carpitella as they glide past at full speed. Never skipping a beat, a flawless performance on the day from Triple Two Offshore Australia and a perfect setup. JPS Racing kept up the pressure on X Insurance right to the end, but it was too much for the boat. Stancombe and Stevenson out of the race near the end. Carpitella and Nicholson's sublime performance paid off. They finished the race and stayed ahead of Husky to win their first race of the year. Husky runners up using their 13 point world standings cushion to fight another day. And hats off to X Insurance good boy Vodka who despite the huge hits finished the race and got themselves on the podium. A much needed win for Triple Two Offshore Australia which keeps their 2022 world title hopes alive as they take 20 points. Bad toy. Bad toy. Yeah, I needed that. At last. That's three in a row we've been in the lead. Finally got one across the line. We still we are long. We need to be more short in the propeller for a power plane up the waves. Like this, we are on the waves. So, and it's... I had to reverse the styling of throttling, completely reverse, because I don't have the power to broke the, the broke the waves. You know, that's good, good race. We first straightaway, we took off. Oh my, oh god, <laughs> this is it. This is where it ends. That was great though. It was fun.
Those guys, uh, two to two, had a good run. Good guys. That was good. <laughs> Felt that we were faster going up the beach, and they were faster on the other leg. Um, but um, we had a couple of Guardian moats come in and stuff like that. And but it, you know, hey, they did a fantastic race. We were happy, you know, that we got to finish, got it home and stuff, and, and we're still leading the championship, and that's the main thing. Uh, we needed a lot more weight up front. We had no trim left, so uh, we just tried to do the best we could to finish. But we saw JBS pulling up, so we had to kind of get a little faster for a second there. But we were trimmed all the way in, dude, and it was still just, I mean, just not even close enough weight up front. You must have felt that. <laughs> Well, I think that was a lot to do with the setup today. We came around that last turn and there was just a huge dip and we came way off of it and we hit it no acceleration but it just went yeah, set it down and we just kept going but we didn't realize half the boat was We, we knew at that point we couldn't catch for third, you know, obviously the handling of the boat wasn't good good enough for that. Um, so, but we wanted to make sure we stayed ahead of JBS, of course, we're racing. Yeah. <laughs> we, weren't, yeah. we weren't going to finish behind them. Yeah, so, we uh, did finish behind them, we right? We did, absolutely, <laughs> so, but we're gonna, we weren't going to do that. In the overall standings, Triple Two Offshore Australia cut their gap to eight points behind Husky. That concludes the first half of the season review. See you in part two for round four in St. Petersburg, Florida, followed by the stunning conclusion in Clearwater, Florida. Then we'll take you to the sensational races at the Standalone Offshore World Championships in Key West, Florida.